All right, we got a ton of fantastic news from the latest Nintendo Direct. It was supposed to be like an Indie World Direct kind of thing, but they also had some news on some of the Nintendo partners, including, of course, Dragon Quest 3 HD2D Remake. If you like videos on JRPGs, Dragon Quest, and all that great stuff, I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and that is only possible with your help. So please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all, and share this with your friends who also might be interested in JRPGs and Dragon Quest news. Once you create your party and choose all the different job classes that you want your party members to be, uh, you'll be able to fully customize your character's looks, as well as change what voice each character is going to have in your party, so that's pretty cool as well. There's a number of different base looks for each different job class, it looks like, but then you can fully customize the different colors and designs and stuff like that, so that's really cool. So not everyone's party is going to look the same. And then it also went into a little bit more detail as far as the Monster Wrangler job class. So the Monster Wrangler job class is going to be able to perform monster abilities. So you'll have like fire breath attacks, you'll have some group heals and stuff like that, which is awesome. That's kind of what a lot of people have been speculating, that it's going to be kind of like... Uh, Dragon Quest 7 and 6's kind of monster classes where you get to use the monster abilities that monsters would use. And then it did hint at the very end that there's going to be a use to recruiting monsters. Whether it's going to be some kind of an immigrant town that is going to be run by monsters, or if it's going to be kind of like, I think it was Dragon Quest 7 or 6. You can send your monsters to an area and then, I don't know, they just kind of get stored there. I don't remember what the purpose of that place was. If you remember, please let me know down in the comments below. A little bit of quick news on Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince. It is going to be releasing on Steam on September 11th. The pre-order price is $39.99 US dollars. So that's good news. This could mean that we're going to be getting it on other consoles. The only downside is that they have said there will be no online play or battles in the Steam version just due to the risk of people cheating and stuff like that. So that's kind of a bummer. I would like to see it come to the PlayStation and Xbox consoles and have cross-platform battles and tournaments and stuff like that. That would be absolutely fantastic. All right, moving on, let's get into something a little bit different before we get into the other JRPG news. We've got two non-JRPG games that I am highly interested in. I've been highly interested in Shovel Knight for a long time. Now, there's a ton of different versions, or I don't know if they're versions or sequels, because I've never played Shovel Knight. All the different versions and or sequels confuse the hell out of me. I don't know which one to play. There's a new one, Shovel Knight, Shovel of Hope. The date is unannounced currently, but it looks like it adds a bunch of features. This one looks like a remake of the original game. Possibly all of them are. Who knows? Let me know in the comments. It looks like it's adding multiplayer, which is fantastic. If I'm ever going to play through this game, multiplayer is probably going to be the way to do it. Looking forward to checking this game out eventually sometime. Next up in the non-JRPG list is Castlevania Dominus Collection out now basically it looks like it's out now on steam it's gonna be on all modern consoles i'm assuming just like the other castlevania collections were this one includes castlevania order of ecclesia castlevania portrait of ruin and castlevania dawn of sorrow so these would be the ds ones which is why it uses the name dominus collection dominus starts with a d ends with an s these are ds games so i wasn't a big fan of order of ecclesia but the other two on here were absolutely fantastic an absolute must buy for Castlevania fans such as myself. It looks like there's a couple different ways you can have your uh, viewing interface. So you can have it so the map is always visible on screen as well as your character's stats and stuff like that. I like that a lot. There's a lot of different ways you can do the, the DS style layout on TVs. And also for, I think it was Dawn of Sorrow, where you had to like trace these seals in order to open certain rooms and fight certain bosses and finish off bosses. It'll have full controller support now too, so it looks a little janky. Some of the abilities that you would use your, your DS stylus for, like the ice, chipping away the ice and stuff looks a little janky on controller, but what else could they have done really, right? Anyways, on to the next games here. We've got some Sea of Stars DLC coming out. Spring of 2025, it's called Sea of Stars Throws of the Watchmaker. It looks like it's got a carnival theme. So you've got new abilities for the main characters. This DLC is free, by the way. And they all have new uh, abilities and stuff like that. It looks fantastic. Next up, I want to talk about Suikoden 1 and 2 Remaster. Finally has a release date of March 6th, 2025. So gives us a lot of time to play through our backlog. 
gives us a lot of time to play through Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake when it comes out in November, November 14th to be exact. I think it's the perfect time to have the Suikoden 1 and 2 Remaster come out, personally. It looks fantastic. All the pixel work looks amazing. They added a fast forward feature and an auto battle if you're interested in using that. It just looks fantastic. Last but not least, I would like to talk about Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky first. So we've got some new footage. Uh, this, this was just like absolutely shadow dropped. I feel like the Castlevania news was also shadow dropped. Launches worldwide in 2025. We don't have a release date yet but it looks fantastic. It looks to be a remake of the first Trails in the Sky game. I have not played the Trails in the Sky series. I am looking forward to playing the Legend of Heroes series as soon as I possibly can, starting with the, I think it's Turbo Graphics or Turbo Graphics CD game. That's just how I play series. I always have to start from the beginning. That's just how I am. So I'm looking forward to checking that out and getting invested in the series. It looks like a fantastic series. This game looks incredible. Legend of the Heroes or Trails in the Sky fans, you've got a remake to look forward to as well. Well, that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I wanted to save you some time by making this video so you don't have to watch the entire Nintendo Direct. This has pretty much everything that a JRPG fan and then some would be interested in. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next one. Check out some of my top 10 videos. Check out some of my previous Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake videos for some information on that. And uh, if you want to hang out live, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night. We've been playing Dragon Warrior on the NES in preparation for Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake, as well as Trials of Mana. We've been playing three-player co-op with my friends, so on Sunday nights. So check that out. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comments, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.